We're now in the corridor bedroom. This is uh, one of the original 13th century bedchambers. It has three lancet windows, 13th century windows. Uh, although the one behind me here was remodelled during the 1960s because it had been replaced by a, a larger Georgian or Victorian window. Um, in here, the, uh, the prize piece, if you like, is this wonderful four-poster bed. Um, this is known as King Dick's bed in that uh, this bed, or possibly one that was just very like it, um, came from the Blue Boar Inn where Richard III is supposed to have slept uh, two nights before he was killed at the Battle of Bosworth. Um, there are engravings from probably 300 years ago which do seem to show this bed. Um, we know that the, the top part has been extended because this bed was uh, displayed at Bow Manor Hall by the Herricks, or displayed, it was used in the bedroom at, uh, at Bow Manor Hall by the Herrick family. Um, because the rooms at Bow Manor were so big, they actually heightened the bed to make it look less lost. Um, the ornate carving around this shows that this is very much a Jacobean style of bed. Um, so certainly most of what you can see um, is far too late to have anything to do with Richard III. Um, but down at the, the bottom of the bed, uh, there's a much older uh, oak frame, uh, which just possibly um, could be uh, of that sort of vintage. Um, the bed that's described as being Richard III's bed, uh, his travelling bed, was very ornately carved and had um, uh, fleur de lis and roses, I think, uh, uh, painted on it. Uh, and the bed that was at the Blue Boar Inn, which allegedly contained a whole load of gold coins left behind by Richard III, was supposed to be a much bigger affair, uh, with it's essentially a box bed. So uh, the chances of this being Richard III's bed are about nil, but it, it has uh, got its own legend associated with it, and it's a beautiful bed and fits wonderfully in our 1620s home. At the foot of the bed we have a uh, beautifully carved, again, uh, Jacobean coffer, um, this is the sort of place, the uh, a sort of chest that the, the bed linen would be kept in. So, for instance, if the curtains were being replaced or taken down for whatever reason, they'd be stored in here. Uh, the bed sheets, the linen bed sheets, the, uh, the coverlet, you know, the extra thick coverlet for winter uh, might be kept in here as well. Uh, there's another coffer uh, to my left which um, would contain the clothes uh, for, the, for whoever's staying in this room. Uh, we're never quite sure exactly of the occupancy of a house like this. Uh, in our story, if you like, we have um, uh, the, the man of the house and his wife, a young um, child, and then we have live-in servants, but they wouldn't be staying in this room. If perhaps this would be the guest room, uh, or perhaps um, the, the, the man of the house might sleep in one bedroom and the lady at another at certain times. We don't know. Uh, either way, though, uh, this is a beautiful room. We call it the corridor room because there's a, a doorway uh, where, where our camera is now and there's another doorway which you can see over next to the bed. This is one of our very special doorways in the house in that this, uh, this timber arch is over 700 years old. It's one of the original doors from the late 13th century house. Uh, there are various burn marks on it. Um, which you might think is just carelessness, but actually this is deliberate taper burning, uh, probably from the medieval period through to the 17th century, maybe even a bit beyond, uh, whereby um, a, a lit taper is pressed against the oak for, for several minutes, so it leaves a substantial burn mark. We've got a group of four here, there are two underneath it, one there, uh, a large one here, another one above it. Um, these are, again, part of the efforts of the household to ward off evil spirits and they're often seen on these wooden um, uh, portals if you like. If you look at a doorway you're transferring from one space to another so they're protecting the zones of the building in this way.